Hello viewers. Thank you for tuning in once again. Welcome to the study of the book of Acts of the Apostles. We have been looking at Acts of the Apostles from chapter 1 through to chapter 10. And today we are going to look at chapter 11 of the book of Acts of the Apostles. So far we've seen how God has used the disciples to do great works and we've been introduced to several of the disciples and how God used them at their availability. Last time we ended up looking at Peter in the house of Cornelius and what God did in that house where the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit and they were baptized into the body of Christ. From chapter 11 we notice that Peter has some explanations to do, but I'll read from verses 1 to 5 to help us begin this study. The apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of the uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. And Peter continues to explain his vision and what um, occurred during and after that vision. This goes on through to verse 18 where the scripture says, When they had this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. That was a great submission for the part of the Jewish believers because they had the prejudice against other people. And uh, for them to accept that the word had uh, been given or grace had been given to the Gentiles to receive the gospel as well was a great thing. And so we learn from that that indeed uh, God can use any way to break through in any situation so that his word can reach his people and salvation can reach his people. From verse 19 in the same book of Luke of, of Acts chapter 11, what we see is um, what happened thereafter. After Peter's explanation, um, the believers uh, were at peace and they went on in the ministry. Now, verse 19, those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. That bit of scripture tells us about the persecution, um, that had scattered many of the believers. And this is where we find uh, from the time of Stephen to this particular point, we see uh, that idea of the persecution coming in. It's like there was a beginning point and this is like a bracket that is uh, bring us back to the idea of the persecution that many believers had been dispersed. So apart from Peter and uh, other disciples that like Philip that we saw, many other believers that are not uh, documented by name were dispersed and they went far and wide spreading the gospel. As the scriptures have said there, that some went to Cyrene, to Cyprus, and others also went to the Greeks, uh, telling them the good news. Some of those only chose to go to the Jewish people, uh, Jewish people um, but others chose to go to the Greeks as well. And by this point, at this point, we realize that Peter has uh, been dealt with in terms of his prejudice. And uh, probably even those that had gone to the Jewish community only at this point had a change of mind. Scripture says that the Lord's hand was with them. Whether they went to the Jewish people or to the Greeks, the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Um, what we see from this is that when we speak,
spread the gospel or we share the gospel, God will always minister to his people. In one way or another, they will believe. And those who believe will be received into the house of God as children of God. And when this happens, the next verses tell us that news of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and he saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them uh, all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Now, between verses 22 and 24, we also see uh, another uh, working of the Holy Spirit through the disciples and through the servants of God, like Barnabas. Um, so, in this portion, news reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and therefore, they chose to send Barnabas to Antioch. And uh, what we saw earlier in verse 20 is that some of the believers had reached Antioch, and this is where they spoke to the Greeks. These were those who were non-Jewish uh, people. And so the church in Jerusalem thought it wise to send a seasoned believer to go to Antioch so that he could help in establishing the church there. Uh, probably through teaching, uh, just uh, making sure that they had the proper doctrine in place and they had the proper uh, structures in place for the church in, 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 in Antioch. Now, Scripture tells us that uh, when Barnabas got to this place, he saw several things. And I want us to look at that briefly in verse 23, that when he arrived, he saw the evidence of the grace of God. This portion of scripture introduces us to the man Barnabas. Um, we had been introduced to him earlier on in chapter 4, uh, towards the end of it, where the believers were bringing in their goods, they were selling their property, and Barnabas is one of those that sold his property and brought and put it at the apostles' feet. In fact, scripture there tells us that Barnabas was also called Joseph or Joseph, and uh, he was a generous man. He was one that was selfless, and uh, that is why he was able to sell his property and bring the proceeds at the apostles' feet. Probably we may want to look at that portion of scripture. That is uh, Acts chapter 4 and um, verse 36. It says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This is the first point that we meet Barnabas. He was a Levite from Cyprus and uh, he was called the son of encouragement. This is uh, something to learn from that we can be uh, believers and uh, we can be generous people. We can give of our substance and time so that the work of God can proceed. Uh, it also reminds us that we can support the ministry in different ways. In this case, he brought whatever he had at the apostles' feet and the work of God continued. And so we introduced again to Barnabas here um, um, in, in Antioch now. And that tells you that Barnabas has been in the mission uh, throughout since the beginning, you know, from the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem and uh, the brethren bringing their gifts together, sharing the, uh, the, the, their goods and the dispersion that came because of the persecution. And so Barnabas finds himself now uh, sent to Antioch where the good news has reached through the other believers who were not necessarily uh, documented by name in the scriptures. And so Barnabas is said to be, um, uh, when he got there, that he saw the evidence of the grace of God. And when he saw that the Gentiles could receive salvation, which is by faith, you know, it's by the, our salvation is, is, is by, by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he was really glad for that. This is a believer that is glad to see other people or non-believers receive the Lord in their lives. 
And uh, I think that is something to think about. How many times are you glad when you hear that um, a drunkard or a, a, a murderer or um, somebody that is wicked in their actions has received the Lord? How many times are you glad about such news? Barnabas was glad that these people received the Lord. And uh, he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts powerful there. Barnabas, uh, true to his spirit, an encourager, encouraged these dear ones to remain true to the Lord with all their heart. Barnabas stood out in encouraging the body of Christ. And this is just but the beginning. The Bible tells us that he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Through Barnabas, we can see that many more people were brought to the Lord. But just to focus on Barnabas at this point, we can see a few characteristics that I would like for us to zero in on. When we said that he is an encourager, and he used the gift of encouragement to encourage these believers in the city of Antioch. The church was just beginning, and there probably was no good leadership in place. They were not as well rooted in the word, but Barnabas encouraged them, and they grew in the Lord, and many were brought to the Lord. And then we can see that the scripture tells us that Barnabas was a good man. That is, that is something to think about. How many times have you heard somebody told of being a good man? Or to put it this way, how many people have you told you that you are a good man? Barnabas was said to be a good man. And uh, why was he a good man? Uh, probably some of these um, uh, things mentioned here would tell why Barnabas was a good man. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And he was also full of faith. Those two things are important. If we are going to be good, then we need to be baptized in the Lord Jesus Christ or in the body of Christ. That is, we must be believers. And then we also need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need to be attached with God because we know that God is good. Our goodness can only come from God himself. And so unless we are united with God, then we may not um, uh, find the virtue of goodness in us. Faith is something else. That Barnabas was full of faith. That was something that we need. That is something that we need in our lives as believers today. Um, the Bible continues to tell us then in verses 25 that then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people in that place. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, because of Barnabas' uh, generosity, Barnabas' uh, um, reaching out and being able to encourage, he did not stop there at Antioch. For some reason, he had wind about Paul. And the Bible says that Barnabas went to search for Saul, for Saul or Paul, Paul at this point. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch so that together they taught the church in Antioch. That was a powerful thing that Barnabas did. We see in Barnabas several things again. That um, in his life, he was selfless. And um, he was a humble person. Probably he realized that being alone, he would not be able to manage the ministry in Antioch. And he needed some help. And so he went to seek for help from Paul, who was also a new believer, uh, however, not, not very new as it were. Um, but Barnabas noticed that he needed to help Paul to grow in his faith and also for Paul to be accepted in the body of Christ. Remember, Paul had this um, negative um, background and uh, many people had not trusted him fully. And probably those are some of the things that Barnabas uh, wanted to address when he went to seek for Paul. And so when he found Paul, he brought him, and together they taught the word of God in, um, in Antioch, and the church grew, uh, as we shall see later on. Um, it is a powerful thing 
if you can be an encourager, you can be a mentor like Barnabas was for Paul, and also that you can be selfless like Barnabas was. So from these portions of scripture, we see that uh, we need to be a people that are open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and be able to hear what he prompts us to do, and we take that action. Verse 27 onwards, scripture says that during this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now, during this time, that Barnabas and Saul are teaching the word of God in the city of Antioch, some things were happening in the body of Christ. We realize that there were some prophets as well, because God had called many people. And so there were different gifts operating in the body of Christ. So as Barnabas and Paul were teaching, there were prophets among them as well, or there were prophets that came around, and they accepted the ministry of these prophets. And uh, one of those prophets um, predicted that uh, there would be a famine, and uh, the disciples at this point, Barnabas, in the leadership of Barnabas and Saul, took this seriously. And uh, they brought their goods together. They decided that they would support the church in Judea. And so they brought their resources together and they sent these resources by the hands of Paul and Barnabas later on. Now, that portion of scripture reminds us of the need to be faithful to the calling that we have been called with. Remember, Barnabas earlier had asked these believers to be true to their faith. He had asked them to stay true, uh, to stay true in their faith. And they actually lived up to that. They decided that we're going to help their fellow believers in Judea by bringing in their resources together. And they entrusted these things to Barnabas and Paul. Finally, brethren, as we end this session today, I just want to pick a few things from especially the life of Barnabas. We see that Barnabas was one that had true humility. Secondly, Barnabas was one that was full of encouragement and he did everything within his, will, his powers to encourage people when he found the opportunity. Um, thirdly, we can see in the life of Barnabas that he was one that was full of positivity. He did not see anything that uh, would discourage him from reaching out to Apostle Paul at this point, not yet an apostle, but he reached out to him. He didn't see the negative things that were in Paul's life at that point. Uh, number four, we would notice that Barnabas must have been a very courageous man. Um, going to reach out to Paul or Saul at this point was not easy, but he took that step and uh, he went and found him and brought him to the church. Uh, number five, in the life of Barnabas, we see a mentor, one that was ready to pour his heart or his life out to others and share his life with others. He did that with Paul. He did that with the church in Antioch. And then we also see generosity, which we've talked about earlier on. He had sold his field and brought the proceeds at the feet of the apostles. Of course, Barnabas had a big heart. That is why he had to go and find Paul and bring him in. And then we also see that Barnabas was selfless. He was selfless. Um, and so he was ready to do anything, get out of his way, and just to bring Paul into the fold. And then finally, he was trustworthy. Barnabas was trustworthy. And that is why the church in Antioch was able to entrust them with Paul, with the resources that they had brought together. Now, in uh, finishing this bit of, of study, I just want to encourage all of us to know that God has called us for a purpose. The, way, the same way he called Barnabas, he has called you. And therefore, be at a, a place where you are at his disposal. Be open to the leadership of the Spirit of God and uh, just allow him to use you as he used Barnabas in this portion of Scripture. Thank you for watching and may God bless you.